Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on testing for and understanding heteroscedasticity when preparing to conduct a linear regression in SPSS. Taking a look at the data loaded in the data editor here in SPSS, you can see I have three variables, and these are fictitious data. I have an ID variable, and in this data editor there are 100 records loaded a symptom variable measured the continuous level and an outcome variable measured the continuous level. And let's assume that these scores are recorded as T-scores. That's a standard score with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. So one of the assumptions of linear regression is that you have homoscedasticity. So when we're testing assumptions, and if we test for homoscedasticity, and we do not have it, that's referred to heteroscedasticity. And that's a violation of that assumption. To get an idea of why this is important, why the assumption of homoscedasticity is important, let's first take a look at the graphs chart builder. And I'm going to put in a simple scatter. And of course, this is a fairly straightforward regression. We have one predictor variable, symptom, and one outcome variable, named outcome. So I'm going to plot symptom on the x-axis and outcome on the y-axis. So this is going to produce a scatter plot with the raw scores, with the values we have here in these variables. I click OK. And we can see here that we have symptom plotted against outcome. And remember, in a regression, what we're trying to establish is how well we can predict a dependent variable with one or more independent variables. So in this case, how well can we predict the outcome score if we have the symptom score? How much variance in the outcome score is explained by the symptom score? So as we look here, we can see that at the lower values of the symptom variable, we have a fairly tight grouping of points. And as we move to the right and we have higher symptom scores, the variability in the outcome increases greatly. Now there's another test that I'll perform to test for homoscedasticity. But this gives you an idea of the concept. So for these lower values of symptom, it appears that we could predict outcome fairly well. But for these higher values, this model does not hold up as well. So I'll demonstrate with standardized scores. If we go in here to Analyze, and then Regression, and Linear, Outcome will be the dependent variable, Symptom will be the independent variable, and I'm going to move to plots, and I want to plot the predicted scores against the residuals. So here I'm going to move the standardized predicted scores on the x-axis, and the standardized residual scores on the y-axis. I'm also going to add histogram and the normal probability plot, and click continue. And that scatter plot will test for homoscedasticity as well as linearity, another assumption of regression. However, I'm still going to add some statistics here, even though you would not need this just to test for linearity and homoscedasticity. I'm going to add R squared change on here. Click continue and then click OK. So I'm going to come back to the model summary and ANOVA, I'm going to move down to that scatter plot first. And we can see here we have the standardized predicted value on the x-axis and the standardized residual on the y-axis. And what we're looking for here is a rectangular pattern of dots. That would indicate homoscedasticity. What we have here, you can see we have plots pointed to the left that are closely grouped together and 
points plotted to the right that are spaced out quite a bit vertically. This would indicate heteroscedasticity. And for the test of linearity, we'd also want to see the points kind of mapped out in a rectangle. And of course, we don't have that. So here we have heteroscedasticity, which is a violation of the assumption. And we have nonlinearity, which is also a violation of the assumption for regression. Now, being aware of these violations is important. If we take a look here at the model summary, which I skipped over before, we can see that we have a statistically significant finding here and for ANOVA. And if we look at the R square change, it's 36.4%. So 36.4% of the variance in the outcome variable can be explained by the symptom variable. So if we were not aware of the violation of homoscedasticity and the violation of linearity, we would assume that we had a fairly good model fit here. But of course, as we know from looking at the scatter plot, this model does not accurately predict the outcome at all levels of the symptom variable. It may be helpful in understanding the scatter plot to calculate it a different way. I'm going to go back to the data editor. And what you can do here from analyze, regression, and linear, the same dialogue that I went to before, is under the save button, you can save as a new variable the unstandardized predicted values the standardized as well as adjusted or standard error of mean prediction. So in this case, I'm going to use the standardized predicted values. I check that off so I can produce a new variable. And under residuals, of course, you have many options here too. Unstandardized, standardized, studentized, deleted, and studentized, deleted. I'm going to go to standardized residuals. So here I'm going to produce two new variables, the standardized predicted and the standardized residuals. And click Continue and click OK. And I'm not interested in the output here so much as I am these new variables that are created. So we have the standardized predicted value here and the standardized residual. And I can go back to Chart Builder and I'm going to move symptom and outcome from the simple scatter. And for the standardized predicted values that we saved, I'm going to put those on the X axis and then the standardized residuals on the Y axis. And click OK. Here we can see the old scatter plot. If we scroll down, we can see the new one. And you see the shape of these scatter plots is the same. You can see it's a little bit different with the way the values are represented. You have one point and then you have five zeros and the same for all the predicted values and the same for all the residuals. But the shape of the plotted points is identical. It's the same concept. You have standardized predicted values on the x-axis and standardized residual on the y-axis. That's the same thing you have here. I hope you found this video on testing for heteroscedasticity in SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.